Diabetes, hosted by Father Mulla Homeopathic Medical College, Mangalore, which serves as a common platform for all homeopaths far and wide to share their views and opinions and also to share their success stories which binds all of us into the common fraternity. For this webinar today, I welcome our Administrator, Reverend Father Roshan Krasta, our Principal, Dr. Shiva Prasad K, Vice Principal, Dr. ESJ Prabhukiran, all the delegates and all the alumni and all the participants. Today, we have amidst us Dr. Hema Tilak, Medical Officer, who will be briefing us on a glimpse to homeopathic research. I welcome you, ma'am. I welcome Dr. Sajan K.R., HOD, Department of Community Medicine, the moderator for today's session. Welcome, Dr. Sajan. I request Dr. Sajan K.R. to kindly take over the session. Thank you, Dr. Deepa. Good evening, all. Today's session, we are going to start. Philosophy is like being in a dark room and searching for a black cat. Metaphysics is like being in a dark room and search for a black cat which is not there. And the ultimate research is trying to explain why the room is dark, why the cat is black and whether it is there or not. Research is the language by which the scientific world interact. We have to get acquainted with the research in general and research in homeopathy in particular. We may be good practitioners. We must be showcasing our talents, but need to be good researchers also. So this is the summit or the scenario the world demands from us to learn about the scientific language that is research. So here we have, it's my pleasure to introduce today's resource person, Dr. Hema Tilak, who will be presenting the topic, A Glimpse to Homeopathic Research. Completed her UG and PG from Government Homeopathic Medical College, Tiruvannathapuram. Gold Medalist of Kerala University in 2005. Presently working as Medical Officer, Government Homeopathic Dispensary, Maluvanur Ernakulam. Rendered her service as a Senior Research Fellow from 2008 to 2010 at Central Research Institute for Homeopathy, Kotayam. To her credit, she won South Indian Paper Presentation 2019, run-up for Research Paper Presentation Contest 2019. She also participated in International Conclave 2019, published regularly various research papers and articles. With these few words, I introduce to you Dr. Hema Tilak. Dr. Hema Tilak, the floor is open to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sajjan. And let uh, first time conveying my uh, deep uh, appreciation and deep thanks for inviting me uh, to this uh, session. Uh, it's my pleasure to be a part of the Mandarin Group. group. As such, uh, now, uh, uh, we shall go into a glimpse of homeopathic uh, research. So the thing is that research is like an ocean, as uh, Dr. Sajan at the beginning stated, it's, uh, it's about the wife and house and what it is. So uh, it's, it's like an ocean. So it is, uh, I'm, I'm in the shore of the ocean as well. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, discussing whatever I have uh, studied or I have attained through this uh, for today, for this five years here. And it will be like a discussion, and uh, I welcome you all to participate in this discussion so that uh, we can have any practice session. Okay, uh, so uh, let me now uh, go to my uh, slide. I think I'm audible to you all. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Oh, right. So let me share my screen now. Yes, ma'am. So we 
application group into a lens for the bibliographic research. So as such, we all know that our master, Dr. Samuel Hanman, and uh, why we will conifers uh, go for the research? As such, Hanman is the first of all, the secret that the high and only mission of our of these universities to restore the sick, to help to cure us. So what is our goal? We have to just uh, uh, treat the public to help to just cure them from the then why should we go for all this uh, research and why should we spend our why should we spend our valuable time for that? Why should we do all this? Anyone? Can anyone please share? Is research needed for movie parts? Or all this experience and all is just enough? And we have treated this much of patients and we are satisfied. Is that all? Can anyone please tell why homeopathy, uh, why research is needed in the field of homeopathy? Yes. I think this is an interactive session and uh, I expect you all to please interact. Hello, madam. Hello, madam. Yeah. yeah. The, the audio is very uh, feeble and it's uh, breaking. So, okay. Okay. How is it as of now? Hello. Hello. Yeah, yes. the, the audio is very feeble. It is like breaking. That's why. Can you? Yeah. One minute. One minute. One second. How is it now? Uh, it is better, better now. Okay. Madam, you can be a little louder. Okay. Now, can I continue? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, hello. Uh, so, coming to the, uh, like Hanuman as a research, I was talking about that. Uh, so, uh, as, so, so, Hanuman has already said in the part number one that the highest mission of the homeopath is to treat the sick folk, to cure the sick folk. And, uh, then what is the need of our research as such? Is there any need for research in homeopathy? Or uh, are we all satisfied with the experience that we have uh, treating the sick? Yes, if anybody can, I think somebody has raised their hands. If anyone has an answer, you can please answer for that. Okay, then we'll just continue with the slide. Uh, 
So, uh, in homeopathy as such, uh, So, in homeopathy as such, we need to do our, uh, what do you say, our first study because we have to showcase our, uh, our findings. You all, we all are seeing many patients and we have got many data in our hands. But we have to project it to the outside world, what we have, what we have attained, what we have done to the, uh, to the public. Many times what happens is that we do many things for the public saying we are treating many patients, we are treating many chronic acute as well as many rare disorders, but the outside world is unaware of what we are doing. So just to showcase our attainment, just to present it scientifically before the scientific community, we need to do the first studies. So uh, of course it's very important and as of now, this is a scientific world and uh, we homeopaths are lagging behind it because uh, our research, research studies are very less and compared to that of others. So we have to do more and more research. Now coming to what is research? Research is just searching something, you know, as we search, to search something again and again. That is actually the word meaning of research. But this search, you know, this search should not be a, just a, it should not be a mere search. It, this uh, search should be logical, systematic, as well as it should be scientific. Then only it becomes a research. So there are different types of research. I've just, uh, for, your, for your information, I'm just telling about the different types of research. And uh, we'll go to research proper and later to research. About the types of research, the first one is a fundamental or the very basic type of research. And that uh, uh, try to find out the basic principle or uh, the theory that exists behind no normal natural phenomena. So it is a basic type of research, or as, a, uh, as such, it is called as a theoretical research or a fundamental type of research. The next one is applied research. Whatever we have uh, gained from you, uh, from the uh, from doing the fundamental work, we can apply it. We can we can frame new uh, new problems and we can solve it using the uh, theory that we have gained from applied uh, from uh, fundamental research, and we can use it as applied. Research. So whenever you uh, use the theories of the fundamental research and uh, you use it to solve some problem, then that research is called applied research because it's an application method. Now coming to some uh, commonly used terms of quantitative, when uh, you uh, are, when you share to someone uh, some uh, non, uh, some researcher that you are doing you are doing uh, some research or you are planning to do some research, he will uh, he or she will ask you whether are you going to do a quantitative research or a qualitative research. So naturally we must know what is a quantitative, research, what is a qualitative. Quantitative research, as a name uh, suggests, it is, it is, it is uh, to do something with a number. So it is a numerical type of uh, research. That is, we are uh, dealing with numerical data in quantitative research. That is numbers. Here we use uh, statistics, mathematics, tables, graph, etc. to do research. So that is called as quantitative research. The other one is qualitative research. Here, it, it, uh, it uh, what do you say? It measures some quality, quality variable. That is, it has nothing to do with number. It deals with some uh, reasoning, some descriptive statements, or some words. So it is called as qualitative research. So, a mixed type of research can also be done. That is, a mixture of quantitative as well as qualitative. The other one is exploratory research. Exploratory research is like you 
are going to explore something you're taking a point in literature or you're taking you're focusing your attention to a particular group and you are going to explore what is happening in that group that is called as exploratory research so you have to identify a key issue or a key variable and you have to uh, you have to go exploring to find out the reasons behind and that is naturally as the word suggests as a term suggests exploratory research next one is descriptive research descriptive research you want to describe something why this is happening uh, that is what is happening in this uh, community you want to describe what and how this is happening then you have to descriptive uh, research as well the other one is an explanatory research in explanatory research we have to explain things why you have to you have to give answer to the question why why this particular problem is happening in this particular community why there is increased prevalence of anemia in this community in this population why it is happening so so you are trying to explain something in so such type of research that is explanatory research the other type is the longitudinal research that is you are longitudinally that is over the time you are following a group hmm, and you are also assessing them at multiple points in longitudinal research that is uh, mainly this are longitudinal uh, researches are uh, done to uh, understand the trend of a population that is you are observing that population over a period of time and you are taking data in between at multiple points of time and that is a long longitudinal research also a cohort study if you want to study the effect or uh, uh, what is the effect of uh, cigarette smoking and uh, and a cohort cohort can be termed as a group and a cohort what are the effect of cigarette smoking you can follow a group of persons who are uh, smoking cigarettes for a long period of time and you can assess at different multiple points with what are uh, all the things that is happening to them over the period of time so that is longitudinal research the other one is a cross sectional research that is you are not, in cross sectional research you are not uh, confined to the past or what is going to be happen in the present you are just concentrating now now what is the trend of the population now what is happening so that is you are you are that is called as a cross sectional research so that is all about the different types of research so you have uh, i think you have understood Uh, uh, many types of research are there. Mainly, the researches can be of two types: that is, the fundamental research and the applied research. And the other types of researches include quantitative research when you deal with numbers, qualitative research when you deal with non-numerical explanations or reasoning. A mixed type of qualitative and quantitative research can be the an exploratory research. when you explore into some key issues or key variables a descriptive research when you want to explain the what what is this you are doing or uh, descriptive research the other one is explanatory research that when you want to describe why a certain thing why this is happening then you are doing a explanatory research about longitudinal research you are following a group for a for a long period of time and collecting data at multiple points that is longitudinal research and at the end the cross sectional research that is you are uh, you are just viewing the population as of now what is the situation what is the prevalence of anemia here or what is the prevalence of covid 19 in this population so that is a cross sectional research now for research we need some something something to research about you know and the the what is it, the material with which that we do our research is called this data how can we get the data we are seeing many hundreds or 200 many thousands of uh, people day by day and we are we our brain is like this as such it's, it's completely filled with data but the data that we have is just a raw data or it is an unprocessed data is it we have many thing our no brain we have not processed it. it's still in our brain and there is is there any use for this unprocessed data 
there is no use for this kind of process data. We have to process this data into meaningful information. Only if we process this data into, into uh, information, we can use, it, use this data for process study. So how can we uh, get this data? What are the different ways by which we can get data? We can get data by observation, yeah, by observing, by observing the sick, what is happening to the sick person, which medicine we have uh, given to the sick person. Is this medicine acting onto the sick person? Why is this uh, medicine acting uh, in this um, sick person? How is this acting in this sick person? So we are just observing and we are gathering all this data. And we have to now convert it into information. Another method of getting data is by means of experiments. We can do experiments. That is, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, test for uh, your uh, blood profile and you can get lots of data. Whether your cholesterol is increased, whether you have increased CPS value, whether your um, uh, liver is properly functioning, or is that any, uh, anything, uh, anything to do with your medicine and uh, the CPS uh, values of the person, you can analyze that. You can, here you are using the experimental techniques for the collection. So you can get data by observation, by using experiments. And the third one is by using the different databases. When a, uh, when a particular uh, a theory or a research question comes into a mind, we naturally we, we can go to search for similar studies in the, in the different, uh, what do you say, uh, in the search engines like Google Scholar, PubMed, there are so many search engines for scientific studies published. So here uh, you can uh, make use of the database which is already recorded and you can see whether the question that you have in your mind is relevant or whether some others also had the similar questions or some others had already done some research on this. Or, and if they have done such a research, what are their findings? What they feel like? So from the different databases, you can get information. So data can be, uh, can be obtained through observation and of course through experiments and through the different databases which are available in the different, uh, what do you say, online and offline ways. So as I have already said, data is to be coded to uh, produce valuable information. Then only we can use it for the search term. Now, uh, these observations has to be measured. So, for example, now we are trying to, trying to uh, study the average BMI of uh, the persons in your class. In the first BHMS class, let's just take for example, you want to know what is the average BMI of all the students in the class. So first, uh, from the observation, uh, you feel that uh, some are very uh, obese, some are average type, some are uh, very thin. They are, some are having low, some are having medium, and some are having high BMI. But you can, you are just doing it. You are, you are just observing it, and the information that you get by just observation is raw data. To process the data, you have to measure it, right? You have to measure the. Uh, observation. You have to measure the uh, height and weight of each person and you have to calculate the BMI and you have to convert it into data. So observation uh, when measured leads to formation of data. It can be, data can be age of a, of a class, age average, uh, age group uh, in a particular class or about the sex, gender, or whether if in, if in the case of a disease, whether uh, the family history of the disease can uh, be a uh, piece of information. So anything can be a piece of information. Right? It becomes an information only when it is processed. Data can be qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative data deals with numbers, as such I have already told you. Qualitative data deals with numbers. And the things that you can measure objectively, that is like height, weight, length, age, all such deals with quantity. And so 
uh, the data that deals with the quantity as quantitative data. Uh, uh, you know that height, you can say it is my height is 145.5 or my height is 165.5. It's a number, no? And coming to the age of a person, I'm five years old, I'm 10 years old, I'm 50 years old. All these are numerous. And so this is called as quantity. And how about qualitative data? Qualitative data, it describes the characteristic of uh, the video. You know, that is uh, some characteristic of the thing that we like to measure. It measures that. That is such as color of the person. Taste, te skin texture. So all these are just matrix or characteristic of a particular thing. And when our data measures a characteristic of a particular thing, then that is a qualitative data. It measures the quality and not content. Okay. Now the quantitative data can can be of two types mainly. It can be a continuous data. It can be a discrete data. What is mean, what does a continuous data mean? Continuous data means the data is continuous. We can make it into finer, 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 precise, precise part. Whereas discrete data is discrete. It deals with integers mainly. So as such, the count usually are discrete. Uh, for example, if I'm asking you, how many uh, students are there in your first DHMS class? The answer will be, 40, it can be 50, it can be 60, or it can be 62, 63, 64, and never 62.5 never comes. No, so that discrete that integer, so it is a discrete data. It, uh, it cannot be made more precise like 62.5, 62.7, like that. So the discrete data is mostly integers, so it uh, uh, definitely it shows the count. Now coming to the continuous data, continuous data can be made more and more precise. It can be reduced into finer and finer levels. For example, the height of the kid. What is your height? If I ask you, you can say it is 155.2 or 155.5 or 160.5. It can be made more precise and precise. About uh, sometimes you can, uh, in, the, in the case of weight also, you can say my weight is 50.5. So the data which can be made much precise or, be, or, or which can be, what do you say, like a continuous thing, it is a continuous data. Because quantitative data can be of two types, continuous data as well as discrete data. Coming to the qualitative, qualitative flavors. Qualitative data can be binomial, nominal, uh, ordinal, interval, and ratio. What is this binomial or binary data? It, mean, it means that we can place the things in one or two mutually exclusive categories. Only two categories will be done. Okay, you have to take any one of these two categories. And that is a binary data. For example, uh, there's a true or false question. Do we think that, that uh, there's, uh, the prevalence of COVID-19 is this? Or do we think that the information that we have about COVID-19 is correct? So you can say yes or no, or true or false. Or COVID-19 is uh, caused by this virus. Do we think it is uh, right? You can say it is true or false. Or do you accept this, uh, uh, the fact that uh, COVID-19 is caused by it? Then you can say, yes, I accept or you or again reject. There is only two options. So such a database is called as binary data. The second one is a nominal or categorical data. So uh, for exa example of a nominal data is like, you can only uh, assign some categories to the nominal data. You can uh, never say an order in which this uh, data comes. For example, marital status. You can say, Yes, I'm married, I'm not married, I'm a widow, I'm a divorcee, etc. You cannot say, uh, you cannot, uh, it's not a uh, binary data, or there is a no any order. It's like something which is a categorical data. You are just naming it. 
about the religion uh, you can ask uh, about the religion there also it comes from um, yes i'm a hindu i'm a muslim i'm a christian or like don't have any religion so it is also it's like just naming so that is called as nominal data or categorical data the third one is ordinal data ordinal ordinal means here the categories are ordered it's like the nominal data but here the categories have a definite order for example uh, social status i have all oh, i got said it in the above but uh, it's actually an ordinal data ordinal when you ask for the social status it can be of three types mainly that is it can be low medium high there is an order no a low one a medium one and a higher one about the pain can be mild moderate severe about the stages of a disease can be a stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 like that there is an order for the data and the data that is having an order and that which shows a direction of the order can be called as an ordinal data the other one is an interval scale when the interval between two observations becomes important to us we have to uh we have to go for an interval scale or interval uh scale data the most commonly used interval scale is the lipkov scale and as well as npcs and i'll just uh, show it uh, this is the scale in which five grades are given it's actually the lipkov scale in which five grades are given which this data is, uh, uh, is it is used to show the customer satisfaction to an organization so these are the five grades three grades five grades are given that is one as i agree two is somewhat agree three is neutral somewhat disagree and five is some completely disagree and the interval between this is somewhat somewhat meaningful and it is somewhat simple and so it is called an interval scale this is like an interval scale and about this uh, this is also an interval type of scale which is used in uh, uh, sites and all to uh, to express your so that is uh, to uh, an organizational growth uh, about the satisfaction rate this are the beat factors that is we are not satisfied see That is one, two, three, four. If you are uh, not at all satisfied, you can take this, 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 and perhaps a neutral uh, persons can opt for this, and about the promoters, they can opt for this. So this is the interval scale. Now the other one is a ratio scale. In the ratio scale, uh, 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 it has got absolute zero at the start, starting point. That is a point where the quality being measured does not exist. For example, A. i cannot say that i'm zero uh, at my age is zero year so uh, the, uh, it doesn't have zero as its beginning so um, ratio scale uh, example i will tell you we'll go to the example and you will understand it better so mainly data are of two types that is quantitative as well as qualitative data quantitative data uh, comes when you deal with numbers and qualitative data comes when uh, you uh, deal with characteristics quantitative data can be of two types that is one is discrete when you uh, deal with integers and the other one is continuous when uh, you deal with decimals and more precise data qualitative data it can be ordered and unordered the ordered one uh, shows the range or it shows the direction whereas another data is also called as nominal data now i think you can just suggest i'll show some examples and you please suggest which which data which type of data is this the first one is how satisfied are you with our services and there are five grades for that i'm i'm very unsatisfied unsatisfied neutral satisfied very satisfied so which type of data is that is that a nominal data is that an ordinal data is that an interval scale or is that a data in ratio can anyone say
please unmute and say which type of data is that it is having an order no it has an order from one so from a very unsatisfied to very satisfied an order is it so what type of data is that okay is that a qualitative data or a quantitative data so as i have already said it is it has an order in it and so naturally it is an ordinal data yes so that is an ordinal data now coming to the next question the next uh, uh, question that you can suggest your answer is what is your political preference and the options are uh, independent democrat and republican what type of data is this three types of names are being given so is that a nominal data a nominal data an interval scale or a data in ratio as names are being given that is of course a nominal data so this is an example of ordinal data where orders are specifically given there is an order from a bit in between the choices whereas in which there is only some um, what is said some characteristics is only given there is no orders only some names are given then that is called as nominal data and see this is uh, please select which age bracket you want to order so this is uh, five age bracket are given what type of data is that so a uh, age below 20 years 21 to 30 but uh, uh, zero age zero is not uh, there and so this type of data is a data in ratio it's a ratio type of data and uh, this temperature temperature as far as temperature is concerned there is a uh, zero the, there is an arbitrary zero and the interval between uh, the different uh, variables are very very what is it very up and very clear the interval between two variables and the uh, next two variables are always the same such type of uh, data is interval scale data in interval scale okay so i think it's very clear once again data can be of uh, qualitative quantitative or quantitative data can again be discrete and continuous qualitative data can be ordered and unordered and this is the hierarchy of the different data the how how much value is that the highest hierarchy goes to uh, ratio so among the data some data has got great values and some has less value something compared to that of the other and so uh, ratio is having the highest value whereas a nominal data which just gives a name as having the lowest value now what are we measuring you uh, i have already explained to you that you need to measure something in order to compute it in order to analyze it you have to measure something otherwise you cannot analyze it so what do you want to measure what do you need to measure is called a variable variable is uh, that uh, that thing that varies from person to person it can be age sex height weight skin texture heart rate etc it varies from person to person no it is not a constant for every person so that thing that varies from person to person is called as a variable and there are two types of variable as well the variable variable can be two types it can be dependent variable as well as independent variable so i'll just show a slide so that you can appreciate the difference between independent variable the dependent variable and the rest the control variable the one thing that you can change or the one variable with which you are doing the experiment is called as an independent variable you can change it so it is naturally independent for example you are uh, trying to uh, evaluate the growth of the plant hmm? when you water the plant so 
watering the plant or the uh, quantity of the water you add to the plant that's the independence period is it okay so you are experimenting with this with the with uh, this uh, the quantity of the water to be poured to the plant so that it can uh, so that it can grow so the uh, that that thing with which you are experimenting is the independent variable the other one is a dependent variable the that one and that is the change that happens because of the independent variable or the outcome variable is called as a dependent variable so what we are doing we are pouring uh, liquid to the plant and what is the change that is happening to the plant the plant is growing or the height of the plant is increasing so the height of the plant here is a dependent variable so it's very clear the variable with which you are experimenting is the independent variable and the outcome of your experiment is a dependent variable and what are the, the, then the control the variables the other things which are constant or uh, that are not changing can be called as a control variable example the type of the plant plant used the soil type the size of the pot all such a constant you know so that is not changing at all so that is called as control variable i think it's very clear to you the variable is the thing that varies with person it can be a dependent independent and it can be a control variable and uh, the dependent variable is the experimental variable or the thing with which we are experimenting is the independent variable the dependent variable is the uh, outcome variable and the things that are remaining constant is the control is it okay for you so i am giving you an example for this imagine a tutor a tutor of your first bhms uh, give a maths test or a, a, it can be a, a what do you say material man test to 100 students of uh, your class and do you feel uh, the tutor felt that some students are performing very well very better when compared to that of the others so uh, the tutor want to evaluate what what is the what is the thing that make the some students to perform great when, when compared to the others and the tutor himself he knows that there may be two reasons as you all know what are the what may be the two reason one thing the the student who has performed well must have revised many and many times he have made, made great studies and he has come for examination and so he is performed well the second fact is that that student is a very intelligent his iq is just super and that's why he is uh, doing great work so these are the two reasons for in uh, for better performance of the exam so as such the tutor decide to investigate the effect of revision time and intelligence on test performance so can you say in this which are the dependent and the independent variable you just please make a guess so the tutor want to investigate the effect of revision time and intelligence on test performance of the hundred so which can be the dependent variable any suggestions anyone can say the answer which are which are the uh, variables that are going to be experimented which are used for experiment that's of course the revision time and the intelligence and the effect of this revision time and intelligence on the test performance is evaluated right so the revision time and intelligence is the independent variable and the test performance which depends upon the revision time and the intelligence is the dependent variable i think it's very clear to you so variables are very uh, uh, like the two types dependent and independent now what is the importance of this data why is the study of this whether it is qualitative quantitative whether it is, it is discrete or whether it is continuous why you should bother about all this you make a study and you just do the analysis yes that is the point to do the analysis and to uh, select the statistical method uh, to do the analysis 
you must know which type of data you have in your data. If you have a numerical data or if you have a qualitative data, a quantitative data, numerical data means quantitative data, the descriptive stat statistic that you have to take into consideration is the terms like mean, standard deviation, frequency, and can deal with graph tables and all. Whereas for categorical data, you cannot go for mean, SD, and all in descriptive data. You have to go for mod and percentage. For example, if you are dealing with gender, gender is like a categorical data. You can get only a male, a female, or transgender like that. You can, get, you can never get a number for, for this gender. So you can just compute it as a percentage. That is, out of this, 50%, 56% belongs to male category, and uh, the rest, that is, 44% belongs to female category. So, why should we uh, understand whether uh, the, the details of the data is? We have to understand the details of the data just to know which descriptive statistics that we have to employ. Now, I've been uh, saying about population, about sample, you have to take samples from the here and all. So let's just discuss what is the population and what is the sample. The entire collection of the people from where we have to collect the data is the population. Now, <clears throat> what is a sample? Sample is a selected group which is derived from the population, which, the, which we think is a representative of the population. Okay? So, uh, the pop, for example, in, if uh, we uh, say in the uh, homeopathic perspective, that is, if we want to uh, study the, how do you say, uh, we just want to evaluate the case uh, levels of uh, uh, women who is coming from the thyroid only. So what is the population then? All the persons who are coming to the thyroid office, it include, include male, female, children, everyone who are coming to the thyroid office for treatment in Father Mukha's hospital becomes the population. Whereas the sample consists only, only of uh, women, women who have thyroid disorders and whose TSH is evaluated. So from the population, using some inclusion and exclusion criteria, we select some a sample from the population. And there are many methods of sampling. So uh, we have some uh, parameters for so statistics as well as uh, for sample as well as for uh, population. And the sample parameter is called a statistic and the population uh, estimate is called as parameter. For a sample, the statistic is uh, the mean standard deviation and proportion, whereas the population parameters or population estimate is just for the entire population. So standard deviation is a standard error. Okay, so for uh, to know the uh, to the estimate for the sample, respect to the population. Now, what are the sampling techniques? How can we get a sample from a population? There are two types of sampling method. One is the probability sampling method, and the other one is non-probability sampling method. In probability sampling method, what happens is that each and every person in the population has equal chance of getting selected into the sample. And that is called as probability sampling method. There are many types of probability sampling methods and one is simple random sampling. In this case, each individual is chosen entirely by chance. And each member of the population has an equal chance of getting into Get, uh, getting selected into the sample. For example, we are uh, by using some lottery methods and all, we are selecting this person, this person by random methods. We uh, we just give uh, 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 some bits or lottery, or you can get some electronic uh, randomization tables from the uh, sites, and you can that uh, you can uh, use that for simple random sample. That is, you can select the first person, then you can select the third person, then you can select the seventh person, uh, depending upon the uh, 
and uh, about the non propagative sampling we can go for convenient sampling hotter sampling judgment sampling as well as snowball sampling and in homeopathic research we can uh, use any of this like uh, convenient sampling purpose class sampling then simple random sampling can also uh, go for systematic random sampling that is out of the subjects you can uh, uh, select every every third to be included in the study that is called a systematic random sampling or you can go for a simple random sampling that is by using a lottery method or some random number table method you can select which which person should come into my group okay now now coming to the study design when uh, you propose to do a study when you have a research question what what is the first thing that you need to do is you have to go to the literature search and you have to make an idea of what are the studies that have that have been done in this uh, uh, particular field of field or particular topic of your interest and now after having a research question in mind you have to work upon it and you have to frame a hypothesis or research question in your mind and now you have to go you have to select a research uh, a design for your study so to select a particular design you have to you there is a small flow chart by which you can design which type of study you want to do okay so if we are assigning any exposure or if we are giving any intervention intervention means if you are giving any medicine or something like that or if you are using any tool uh to measure you know then that is called as a uh, that uh, and it comes an experimental study if you are giving if you want to uh, so, uh, you know evaluate the effect of homeopathic medicine then homeopathic medicine becomes an intervention and your study becomes an experiment but uh, on the other side if you are not giving any intervention you just want to observe and see what is happening in the body then it becomes a observation of study okay so in the purpose you have to uh, see whether you are giving any intervention if you are giving any intervention it becomes an experimental study if you are not giving any intervention it becomes an observational study now in the experimental study if you are doing randomization as i have already said uh, before that is there are so many methods for selecting the sample like uh, simple randomization systematic randomization like that so if you are doing any randomization then it becomes a randomized control trial or if you are just taking everyone who have come to our clinic to the study there is no randomization then it becomes a non randomized control trial so here we should have a control aspect an experimental study to evaluate the effectiveness of a treatment or something like that we need a control group which which has all the characteristic of the study group but the only difference is that it is not for this group this uh, control group is not receiving any interest okay so experimental study contains only uh what is say randomized control trials as well as non randomized control trials all the other studies comes into comes into another group that is observational study in observation study also if you have a comparison group then it is it becomes an analytical study or otherwise it becomes a descriptive study so if you doesn't have a comparison group it becomes an uh, descriptive study and if you have a comparison group it becomes a non analytical study and if there is a direction on the on the basis of the direction for your study the analytical study can be a cohort study a case control study or a cross sectional study okay and in cohort study what is happening it is i have already mentioned before it is a longitudinal study that is you are going from an exposure to an outcome that is if you want to know the effect of uh, what is it you want to go or you want to know the effect of uh, what is it lung cancer on a population due to cigarette smoking sorry effect of cigarette smoking 
That is an exposure. We are going to study the effect of cigarette smoking. That is an exposure. This exposure, that is cigarette smoking, can have multiple outcomes. It can lead to uh, cigarette smoking, can lead to lung cancer, can lead to oral cancer, it can lead to many other psychological complications. So there are multiple effects to this cigarette smoking. So you are following a group of smokers and you are, you are observing what sort of things are happening to the smokers. So it is a longitudinal step, you are following them. So when we go from exposure to outcome, it becomes a compound step. As far as case control study is uh, uh, concerned, here we have a group of persons having lung cancer. And you have to go back and see what all things have contributed to their disease control. You're going back. This is a retrospective step. So that is a case control step. So depending upon the direction, it can be a pop up study, it can be a case control study. The other one is a cross sectional study. This cross sectional study is a prevalence study. Prevalence of a particular genetic phenomenon. So here the exposure and outcome is happening at the same time. So it's a cross section step. So the study designs are very simple. Mainly it is of three types, right? Like that is experimental study, observational study, and analytical study. If we are giving any uh, exposure or if you are giving any intervention to the group, then it becomes an experimental study. And out of the experimental study, if you are randomizing the group, then it becomes a randomized control trial. And if you are not randomizing the group, it becomes a non-randomized control trial. And out of the uh, observational study, if you do, doesn't have an intervention to the event, then it becomes an observational study. And in observational study itself, if you have a, uh, what do you say, comparison group, then it becomes an analytical study. If you do not have a comparison group, then it becomes an analytical study. Out of the analytical study, depending upon the direction of, of your study, it becomes a cohort study, a case control study, or a cross-section study. A longitudinal study that is going from the cause to the effect is a cohort study. A retrospective study, which is going from the effect to the cause, which is going back, it is a retrospective study, that is a case control study. And a cross-sectional study is the exposure and outcome are taking place at the same time. So that becomes a cross sector set. Now, about the statistical segment. So, to uh, know which statistical method that you have to use in your study, you have to know uh, uh, many things. The one thing is you must know about your data. As uh, we have already uh, discussed, we should know whether our data is a fair data or an unfair data. Or we must know whether it is a continuous data or it is a categorical data. Also, we must uh, uh, see how many groups we, we need to compare. So, to select the statistical data, we have got many parameters like this. So, we can we'll just go through this. And for this, first we have to do, we have to know whether our data is fair or unfair. What is what is a fair data? For example, we are taking a group, a group of 30 persons. And we are taking their observation just uh, before the intervention and after the intervention. Okay? And so we are getting the fair data of a group. Is that okay? So that is called a fair data. The other one, which uh, have got no pairing, that is before and after, nothing like that, then it becomes an unfair data. Unfair data, so that is the first, first thing, fair data as well as unfair data. Fair, unfair data can be continuous data or categorical data. Continuous, as, as if we have already uh, mentioned, it is a, uh, it is a uh, quantitative type of data. Numerical data. Now, if it is a like numerical or continuous data, then how many groups are there for us to com uh, compare? If there are two groups, 
Then again, you have to do, uh, look whether the data is normally distributed. When the data is normally distributed, it, it should, uh, the, the, when it is plotted in a graph, it should have a, what is a bell-shaped distribution. Otherwise, it, it, it may be skewed to one side. If it, if it is not normally distributed, it may be skewed to one side or it may be skewed to the other side. It's called the skewing of that. So, a, a normal representation of the population, a normal representative of the population should, uh, a good representation or a good sample should be normally distributed. So, if the data is normally distributed, then you can go for an unfair or in independent t-test. If it is not normally distributed, you can go for a mandatory t-test. Okay, and about coming to the categorical data, what happens is that you can you have to classify this as ordinal and nominal data. The ordinal data, if it has got many categories, uh, the test is uh, what do you say? It is again if it has got more than five categories, it is mandatory U test. If it, it is uh, not so, we can go for a chi squared. Uh, to be more, uh, you can get us a bit elaborate. Uh, go like this. That is depending upon the data. If you have to compare two related groups, it, it may, the data may not be normally re represented, but at least it is in an order. You can go for a Wilcoxon sign rank test. That is the name of the test. And if you have to compare more than two groups, and the data is normal and quantitative, then you can go for ANOVA. ANOVA is a test for covariance. Test for variance. Now, to compare more than two groups, which is not normal, but it is ordinal, you can go for Truskell value test. So these are the tests, types of tests. Two related groups. The data is not normally distributed, but uh, it is, if it has some order, then you can go for the Coxon sign rank test. If uh, you have to compare more than two groups, uh, then, uh, and the data is normal and quantitative, you can go for ANOVA. If you can you have to compare more than two groups, but the data is not normal and it is an ordinal type of data, then you have to go for Kruskal value test. Now, to compare two groups which are categorical, categorical, uh, that is qualitative uh, data, then you have to go for chi-square. And in the case of more than two groups also, you have to go for chi-square. Now, to compare two related groups, and when the data is normal and quantitative, you can go for pair T. And this pair T, we normally, we usually uh, employ in our domain study. That is, you, you give medicine to a person, you select a group of persons, select a 30, 30 individuals. You give uh, individuals having some, uh, what do you say, fibroid mucus. You give uh, some homeopathic medicine, like Tuga or something like that, or some constitution medicine or some tincture. You first assess the size of the fibroid. And after giving the medicines, you reassess the size of the size. And you just come there. What is the difference between the two values? So you have a set of information, set of values you have taken in the beginning, and you're comparing it with a set of uh, values which are, which are taken after intervention. So that is a paired, paired value you're getting, and you can do a paired t-test if the values are quantitative and if it is normally to compare two groups, but if it is not nominated or uh, distributed, but it has some, it has some order in it, then it is mandatory. That is the test we have to do. Now, the other test is to compare two groups, which is normal, normal, and if it is quantitative, then you have to. Uh, so this is the two, two related groups. That is, uh, the two groups are uh, the group is the same. You are just taking two of the patient here, so you are taking a, uh, doing a pair of people. But here you are comparing two groups, but it is two independent groups. 
So you have to do independent sample. Okay. So these are some uh, about the some statistical steps that you can employ. Now I'll just uh, tell you uh, some uh, what is it? Some objectives of your work, and you can just suggest which are the study design or uh, which are the statistical statistical steps that you can employ. To estimate the prevalence of anemia in women using copper. So here you have to estimate the prevalence. So is that an experiment? You are are you uh, giving any intervention here? Prevalence of anemia. Is there any intervention here? No, you are not giving any intervention. Right? So it is not an experimental study. So it comes to the category of observation. You are dealing with the prevalence of that in women using copper. So naturally, you are comparing the uh, hemoglobin levels of women using copper tea with uh, Hemoglobin levels of women who are not who are not using any uh, iron. So there is a comparative group. So it is a analytical step, right? And out of the analytical study, is there any cause effect relationship here? You are just trying to find out the prevalence. You are not trying to find out whether um, any uh, whether copper is causing any. So it is as it is just a prevalence study as the cause of it and the effect is uh, taking place at the same time. It is a what is it? It's a cross sectional study. So, so the study design is a cross sectional study. And when uh, in case of cross sectional studies, when you come to the data analysis, the descriptive statistics will be used. Okay. Now we'll uh, go to another objective that is to find out an association between anemia and copper. You just want to know whether there is any association between anemia. So the, the, the here there is a relationship between the cause and the effect. So there is. So which can be the uh, what is it? The study design for this. You are trying to do an association, study to associate between two things, whether one is a cause of the other. So here you can uh, do a cross-sectional study or a case control study. That is, or you can uh, assign uh, cases that is a, very, uh, a group of patients having anemia, and you can uh, place the control. And you can go back and see whether they have any history of IUD. Any uh, property inserted into it which has caused the study. So that then it becomes a case control study. And the data for the statistical analysis, the test is test of association, it's a chi square. To find out the association between two things, we have to do for go for chi square. The last one is to determine whether property causes any. So here we are uh, concentrating on a group of women who, uh, who has uh, uh, inserted property here, following up, following the persons. And we are evaluating at multiple points whether, whether there is any anemia, whether this property is causing anemia. So what type of study is happening? We are following a group of individuals who have imported property and we are looking whether anemia is happening to them. So that becomes a longitudinal study and the study is a cohort study. And in cohort study, we calculate the relative risk and attributable risk. So these are the same to uh, understand the study design. Uh, really Study, uh, few study designs, and you have to. Uh, uh, there are uh, other small types of study designs, like uh, one sample before and after. 
Mostly in university, uh, we take this type of study. That is one sample we have got. In university, what happens is that most, most often we cannot be, uh, we cannot keep a control. That is uh, uh, because of ethical reasons. When persons are coming uh, for us for treatment, we cannot uh, uh, designate them into a control group and we cannot deliver treatment to them. So uh, we are just uh, taking all the uh, patients who are coming in for OK, we are allocating them into a uh, sample. We are taking a sample out of it by the one foundation of the foundation. And, uh, and to them, we are giving homeopathic medicine and we are taking their uh, readings uh, before treatment and after treatment. So, such a sample design as one sample before and after. That can be used as a sample design or study design uh, for the uh, yeah. So that is the, but, uh, the validity is not so much when compared to that of the RCT because RCT is having uh, the greatest validity and the hierarchy is comes from. However, uh, just to avoid the ethical uh, problems and all, if we want to do a safe research, we can uh, go to this design. That is one sample before. Here, uh, there is no control. You can do a randomization if you want, and you can uh, do this step. And the pair of teachers will be the statistical data when we can do such a test. Okay? Uh, so, I think. Uh, Is that okay to you? Any doubt or anything regarding this? Hello. Yeah. Yes. It was, yeah, madam, it was a very informative uh, session we had. I'm very happy to listen from you. We studied a lot of things related to research and the clarity and the exactness was there and we could receive it properly so that you can understand the different aspects of research. And the suggestion, the, the major thing was that the suggestions you asked from the students or the participants, it was wonderful that uh, the brainstorming session, it was exactly, it was uh, reached to the students. Uh, it was very helpful. And I uh, uh, hope that it will be very helpful for them to construct and uh, build new research or researchers in them. Uh, uh, thank you, for, Madam, for that. And I request all the participants to come up with uh, in the chat box some questions so that we can solve that questions now. So I request the participants uh, who can put forward their uh, queries, their questions, so that we can uh, solve it. Actually, this, uh, this topic is such a very broad topic. So I can just touch here and there. That is the only thing that I can do. Uh, uh, takes uh, days and days and uh, years and years of experience and uh, search to become a research so, We uh, admire that the teacher in you, madam. The teacher in uh, now you are there in as a practitioner, uh, but still we can see that uh, the teacher in you taught properly. It was very uh, clear to the uh, participants. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if anyone have a doubt, you can please unmute and uh, please tell your suggestions. No, they cannot unmute because it is operated from here. Okay, okay, okay. And put it in the chat box. So I think. Uh, uh, now, one question is that the health status of homeopaths is it a descriptive study? Yeah, uh, it's actually a wide question. That is, uh, health status, homeopaths. We can we can make it when uh, uh, well, I got the research question. When we uh, have a RA now, might we have to brief it? We have to convince it, and we have to make it uh, like uh, uh, much concise and appropriate. So, uh, if the if the RA comes to you as uh, I think uh, this, Ah, uh, the, the person has asked whether uh, you have to evaluate the health status of homeopaths. 
homeopaths we can we can make them more uh, brief you know, we can uh, make them more appropriate by by concising them into words which homeopath that is uh, around in bangalore or uh, homeopath in kerala it depends you know, as uh, as the situations vary they are scattered also you know? and about the homeopaths also there are very many varieties of homeopaths that is homeopaths working in the government sector homeopathic working in uh, homeopathic medical colleges homeopaths working in uh, what do you say in uh, private practice so then that also we can categorize so if you are doing a study if you just you want to compare i want to compare the health status of homeopaths working in government sector uh, with the homeopaths working in private sector with the health status of homeopaths working in homeopathic institution or i am going to evaluate the stress levels of these three categories you can do what do you say three categories are there and you can uh, do uh, do an analytical study this i can uh, what do you say i cannot be your uh, uh, case control or as it has to do uh, it, it can just be an observational study uh, and uh, it can be a more of a cross sectional type of and it can be a comparative you are comparing three groups and so you can go for a nanova you can uh, you can uh, record with the health status for so health health or uh, for again uh, for the for every research you need a tool so you if you are going to compare the stress levels of these three categories you should get a tool to measure the stress of this person and it is available from, you can uh, take it from the uh, you know you can uh, uh, you can either design a tool for yourself for that you have to validate it you have to standardize it and all or you can uh, use a scale which is already used by others and uh, what is it uh, in their publications or uh, validated already validated scale you can take it and you can uh, use it with your research and you can do a comparative study with the two groups and which group is having most so when when a story comes to your mind you can uh, you can condense this and you can make it more precise out of the whole purpose who out of the whole purpose which group which area for example uh, if you want to study the gss status of uh, uh, or if you have want to study the effectiveness of homeopathic medicine in in in, in managing the clinical hypothyroid what you have to do is that uh, you have to condense it Uh, clinical hypothyroidism in which group? Okay, you can take it as women. Women, because women more than three. Uh, when compared to that of the men, women are more than three times more affected than hypothyroidism. So you can take women, and out of which women, you can also condense it into a reproductive age group. Women of reproductive age group. So you are making your uh, research question more and more precise, and that will help you more in finding out for your uh, study design as well as your statistical segment. madam i would like to ask one question from the participant examples for applied research in homeopathy yeah, whatever uh, whatever research that we are doing right now it's like we are all uh, you are uh, you know you are trying to reprove prove and reprove our principle that is india from the strain that is the basic principle so you are applying this principle on to our homeopathy so it is good and applied so i think all our homeopathy research Uh, which uh, uh, yeah, we are doing is some sort of analysis. One more question is that challenges in homeopathic research. What you have faced? Challenges. Challenges. There are many challenges in homeopathic research. Yes, because um, uh, you know, Aho is a, an individualized type of case. When we study like Aho hypothyroidism, uh, most of the allopathic people uh, they what they do that they have a a, a medicine for a disease. So when they do an RCT or something, they can concentrate just on that single medicine, and they can go. But when uh, homeopaths are concerned, we have uh, medicine, uh, uh, what do you say, individual medicine for individual cases. So that uh, adds to complexity. Uh, as well. That is the only thing is that we can uh, the the most probable medicine. That is, uh, we can find out, we can study the effect of pupils in uh, hypothyroidism. That is pupils in effect. Like that, we get condemned, but then also our homeopathic minds inside us will again look for individuality. Oh, how people we give uh, up on individualization. So 
so that is the thing now the uh, research design that uh, actually properly suits to the homeopathic method is going to be this upon i think so uh, the only thing is that we can modify the techniques that uh, modify the design that are uh, existing and we can use them to our practice so i think the most uh, we commonly so it can be used is one sample to four or after or some cross sectional or observational study it is very difficult to do in a randomized control trial in homeopathy however there are many studies uh, which have been done using randomized control technique and uh, it is the highest in the hierarchy so i advise all you to do a lab okay madam one question is that chi square test its importance in homeopathy uh chi square test as, uh, as such uh, chi square is like to find out the association between uh, uh, different things you are doing. so for example in homeopathy uh you are again uh, you are uh, taking what uh, you take here for example a case of adhd attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and in the in that you are giving homeopathic medicine and you are you are using some tools that is i have uh, seen i have uh, done this test and Uh, I have a tool which I have used, the SMAC four tool. SMAC four is a questionnaire which is uh, which is uh, answered by the teachers and the parents of this uh, particular student. So they will done the scoring, and uh, there is a particular score. And you can uh, now assess whether the uh, after a homeopathic medicine, the person have a mild degree of improvement, whether he is moderately improved. Whether he has marked improvement or whether he has no improvement, these are the four categories into which we categorize the students we have in our group. Whether no improvement, whether there is marked improvement after medicine, whether there is moderate improvement, or whether there is high improvement. So this, the, we are trying to put them into different categories. So it is a, it, uh, the study design here comes as a category. The data is categorical, and here there is more than two groups. When the uh, data is categorical, the most uh, commonly used study is that the chi-square. Whereas, if you give numbers to all uh, to this, if the person is mildly improved, you give one. If you give two, if you give assign numbers and if you convert this categorical data into numerical data, and then you assess the study uh, design with the different. Okay, so this is it is a researcher who should do that. So who should who should actually uh, write a research protocol and in which you should specify why you have uh, uh, taken this why you have taken this data like this and why you are taking this data and why you are doing, uh, doing this test or this uh, uh, test so if the researcher is uh, confirmed about so what is what he or she is going to do then there is no question now here one question is that what is the tool to measure health status or wellness And uh, where we will get it? It is an. Uh, yeah, it is like uh, health status can be uh, what is a the standard of living of the people can be taken standard uh, of living. Uh, so that we can get a tool from WHO. WHO uh, has some uh, designed uh, some approved some validated scale. And if you want to get that scale from WHO, you can uh, you can very well we can easily mail uh, to the uh, uh, research wing and you can ask. Whether we can use this tool, we, we can ask their permission to use this tool in our scientific study. And if you give the clear purpose, your research uh, uh, aptitude and all, if you describe it, they will very well let you uh, use their tool for this uh, for it uh, for evaluating our study. So that is uh, so uh, that helps you to do all this. You just search for your tools. In uh, so there are so many search engines. Uh, as far as uh, this research is concerned, like you can search in Google Scholar, PubMed, and so many search engines are there. And when uh, searching in that, you can uh, see the various studies which are uh, done in the similar field, and you can see the tools which are used in the in their study. And you can now uh, you can if it is a validated scale, you can use that tool, or you can search for uh, uh, like uh, tools designed by uh, WHO. Yes, ma'am. We have finished almost the questions. Now we have went through all these uh, uh, the sessions in that we learned about the types of uh, research, the data, 
how to collect that, then hierarchy of the data, then types of sampling, all these things, study design and types of tests which is required, everything we have uh, kept in our mind so that we can build a new uh, a horizon in homeopathic field. And I'm ho sure that the participants also are very much benefited uh, with this particular session. It was very active uh, session so that uh, all were into the nerves and listened properly. Very happy to have you, madam. Over to Dr. Deepa Ribelo. Thank you, ma'am, for that thought-provoking session. It was a kickstart to many of the budding homeopaths to genuinely think of research, which is the need of the art. As we come to the end of this session, I wholeheartedly thank our administrator, Reverend Father Roshan Krasta, for encouraging us to have webinars of this kind. Thank you, Father. I thank our principal, Dr. Shiva Prasad K., Vice Principal, Dr. E.S. Chaprabhukiran, for their timely help. I take this opportunity to thank, uh, to thank Dr. Hema Tilak for giving us an insight into the homeopathic research. Thank you, ma'am. My sincere thanks to Dr. Sajan K.R., HOD Department of Community Medicine, for moderating this session. I also thank the coordinator and the whole team of webinar, including the technical team, for the smooth conduction of this program and making it available to the homeopathic fraternity. I must appreciate the delegates for actively participating and for making this program a meaningful one. Thank you one and all. And tomorrow we will be back at the same time with yet another interesting topic from our very own alumnus, Dr. Angelica Joseph with the topic COVID-19, the homeopathic response. Until then, take care and good night. So I'm